we've got the Rillaboom and the Urshifu. I really like Rillaboom leads against Maridon teams, especially if the Rillaboom is carrying U-Turn, which Antonio in fact is. It gives you such a nice way to immediately make sure there is no electric terrain on the field, because even though both are on the field at once, the Hadron Engine will activate first, because Maridon is very, very fast, much faster than Rillaboom. Then Grassy Surge activates second. Grassy Surge stays up, and now Urshifu and Rillaboom are sitting in Grassy terrain exactly where they want to be. But not before the Fergarath actually got to consume that electric seed. Correct. The electric seed will boost its defense by one, and on teams like this, the Frigraph often runs maximum defense investment to make sure it is extremely bulky against those physical hits. Urshifu will ignore that plus one defense boost, of course, with the surging strikes if it does opt to go for that. But the Urshifu is running the Water Terra, so you cannot trastalize into an electric resistance. The U-Turn's gonna go first, so that Choice Scarf allowing this Urshifu to outpace any other Pokemon on the field. And there's not gonna be a priority attack here either from this Rillaboom, despite the fact that we have this grassy terrain. So Urshifu gets to do a little bit of chip damage here to that Furgarath, but you can see just how well it's able to actually withstand a lot of that damage thanks to the Electric Seed as a Volt Switch. It really is. Volt Switch, of course, is super effective into Urshifu, but not Amoongus. A very solid swap there from Antonio. Now we'll be able to take that Volt Switch very, very well, as Volt Switch also allows the Maridon to swap back out, come back in later to reset that electric terrain. But it's risky, because what if you anticipate one of these more powerful attacks from this Rillaboom? The only other option that it really has... Electric terrain comes back up. It will stay up for the remainder of the game, unless... ...from his traffic... the firepower or the spread damage, but it's going to be more powerful as a single target attack into this Iron Hand. True. And you're doubling de this down. You're hoping, okay, I've got one special attack boost. That's going to be about 40%. And the wood hammer to follow it up on the grassy terrain uh. is so close to being able to knock it out. But the important thing is that you keep the Terra Shell intact for this Terrapagos so that you aren't going to be taking too much damage from this Iron Hands. You are now in range, I think, of just a spread Terra Star Swarm. You should be. You, you still have to wonder, do you wait and use that Terrestrialization until the Maridon hits the field again so you can take away that electric terrain? The difference, the issue is you're losing your possible spread damage, like you said, Rosemary. You are sing, you're doing single target damage only until you Terrestrialize this Terrapagos. And we also still haven't seen Yan's fourth Pokemon, right? It could be that Urshifu in the back, and if you Terrestrialize, you're just losing Terra Shell, and one close combat could just wipe you out. Yeah. Especially when that Urshifu has a Focus Sash. Right. So you can't just take it out in one hit. But the Psychic Noise that is going to break the Terra Shell, and more importantly, going to stop that healing. So you can't get that Terra Shell back at the end of this turn from the grassy terrain or your leftovers. The combination of the two probably immediately refreshes that Terra Shell on this turn, if not for the Psychic Noise. So that really cool move choice on Frigoraph coming in very handy here. That really could be a tech for this matchup because the way that traffic goes can pretty easily get back to full with the leftovers, with the grassy terrain, can be a bit of a nuisance for this team. But Giannis played this game really, really well. Made sure that Antonio never has had the chance to uh, you know, have a safe moment, even without showing the Urshifu until just this moment. And with a helping hand, with the close combat, even if Trafficos terrestrializes into the bulkier stellar form, I don't think that will be enough. No, I don't think so either. And because of that Focus Sash 2, as we just talked about, you can't just knock out the Urshifu bolt before it's able to connect into you either. Especially not when this Terrapagos is going to be slower than this right. Urshifu. Yeah, it, it looks like all hope might be lost for Antonio here. Jan, looking like he will be taking this first game in our top eight match here at NEIC. And Antonio taking his time, making sure he's got enough time to kind of reset, plan out for game two in this top eight match. Because if Antonio loses this game, and then the following game, his tournament life will be over. That's right. It is a best of three, so a player needs to win two games in order to move forward into the top four. But you can see at least how this ability works out. With Terraform Zero activating, you are going to get rid of the grassy terrain with a helping hand onto the Urshifu. And with the close combat to follow it up, there's your damage calc. It is just a one-hit knockout here. I'm going to give it that. It was definitely going to get that, even if close not for the psychic noise. <laughs> so we're going to see an adjustment here from Yawn. It is going to be this Chiyu and this Whimsicott. And for Antonio, it's a lead right away with this Terrapagos next to that Rillaboom. 
Terra Shell immediately comes into effect. Of course, this Chiyu on Yan's side is holding the Choice Scarf item, so we'll be attacking before this Whimsicott if it, they are both going for damaging moves. Whimsicott, like we said, is holding that Covert Cloak. You cannot fake it out because it will not flinch. It has the option to go straight for a light screen as well, which could be very, very helpful facing down a Trapagos. Uh, and that's a really cool adjustment that some of these teams have made. It's important to note, too, that Chiyu, oftentimes we see that it is going to be Terra Ghost. So that would be one way that the Chiyu in particular could get around actually getting faked out by something like this Rillaboom. And you would just potentially be able to knock it out with something like an Earth Power into that slot. That's true. The Chiyu cannot Trastalize into Ghost Typing this time around because that synergy with Discharge is just so good on Terra Ground. We are going to see the Rillaboom swap out, though. No fake outs coming out on this first turn of the match. All right, so it's going to be Screen Tail. Ooh. Yet another adjustment here from Antonio to bring out that dynamic duo. You're going to see the booster energy on this Screen Tail activate to give it that speed boost. And now you're really pressuring some things as the Whimsicott uses the light screen. Now, Screamtail is the opportunity to just go for an encore into that slot. But with the heat wave that is going to be the Terra Shell getting broken and also the Screamtail taking some damage as it comes oh, in. Is that a critical hit? That is a crit. Uh, unfortunate critical hit there. That is a lot of damage into the Screamtail, which is normally very bulky. Terra Starstorm comes out and thanks to the light screen and of course that grassy terrain, two Terra Starstorms will not be enough to, to knock out this GU. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit more than that. But, you know, maybe you're able to help with a little way at this Whimsicott partner. True. It's it's interesting, though, because Screamtail, the thing it really loves doing is coming in and disabling choice users. Like this Chiyu, for example, it would, love, it would hate to have its Heatwave disabled because it can only use that Heatwave at this turn. But because Whimsicott has that Prankster Tailwind, you will be able to boost the speed of the Chiyu before it can get disabled. And sure, it can fire off at least one more heat wave, which looks like it won't take a KO, but could be uh, really a lot of damage into the Screamtail, which took a lot on the switch in because of that critical hit. Yeah, the Screamtail is put on a timer a little bit, but maybe helps if you are trying to get that Screamtail off the field a little bit faster. But Antonio sees an opportunity to go for this Stellar Terra. Now also seeing this Chiyu having taken about 50% damage, you can follow that up with an Earth Power and potentially get a chance to actually knock it out. Terraform also going to help to get this grassy terrain out of there. And now that this Screamtail has gone for its Protect, you see that Whimsicott actually just uses the Tailwind. So maybe there was an opportunity here for the Screamtail to lock it into that, but it's going to be the Chiyu's Heat Wave first. If it wasn't going to be fast enough before with that Choice Scarf, it surely is now. But take a look at that Terrapagos' full really helping it out so we can withstand that and go for the Earth Power to get the knockout. Earth Power is enough for a knockout, so Antonio takes the Pokemon lead. The issue now is your Screamtail is just protected in front of a Prankster Encore. And like we said before, the Screamtail is very fast, but Prankster will always outspeed you, and you can get locked into that Protect. Screamtail kind of got to give a taste of its own medicine here because it loves coming in on those Protects, Encoring things in Protect, disabling important moves, but it's not going to have that option now because Whimsicott is still there, still very healthy healthy and has the option to lock you out of anything other than protect. Also with Tailwind going up and the Terra Shell being no longer an option thanks to the Terrestrialization, Urshifu coming in here, not a great option for, or not, not, not something Antonio really wants to see either. Or Iron Hands actually. Yeah. Like I know, honestly, either one of those would be fine to have in this situation, but it is the Urshifu that takes the field. It's hard, I don't know what you can do here if you're Antonio, right? The Limsica can just encore your Screamtail. It will prevent you from going for anything like a Dazzling Gleam, try and get some damage on onto these two Pokemon, or an Encore into Whimsicott to make sure it's Tailwinding uh, like Ad Nauseam. And now Close Combat, because the Terra Shell is gone, will be doing full power damage into this Trapagos. Ooh, I like this opportunity though. Maybe go just for double switch. Yeah. You get the screen tail off the field, sure you lose your booster energy, but you're gonna switch in two things that will take uh, Close Combat much better than what you have on the field right now with that Terrapagos. And you start to stall out those turns of uh, Tailwind. That's true, and, and losing your booster energy, you're not outspeeding Maridon anymore if the Maridon is the fourth Pokemon for Yawn in the back, which you have to imagine it is. But you are preserving the Screamtail for later on, so keeping that Pokemon around for later on in this game, clearly the priority for Antonio who swaps that Screamtail right out. It would just also be so devastating to lose a Pokemon though right now. Yeah. I think I would just put Antonio in such a disadvantageous position when you know that this is your tournament life on the line that Moonblast. Perfect target here for Antonio as you switch in that Amoongus. And the Ooh. Wicked Blow! Actually gonna cover a switch here. 
Really smart play from Jan. I think recognizing that Antonio can't let that Scream Tail get Encored, calls that swap out, goes for some damage with Moonblast into the Trapagos, and he goes for that Wicked Blow into Scream Tail. Even with the speed boost from the booster energy, Urshifu and Tailwind should outspeed it, and because you cannot protect in front of Wicked Blow, that would have been a knockout onto Scream Tail most likely, and now Rollaboom comes in, can't take another Wicked Blow itself, and it's also really hard to like fake out here. Of, of course, you think Maridon is a fourth Pokemon, but we've seen people leave their restricted behind this weekend. Yeah. What if it's a free graph? It could be, and that would be a really awkward spot for Antonio to be in. We are going to get a switch, though. The Swimsicott leaves the field. So what is it that's in the back? It it's, is the Maridon, though. Makes sense. You're going you're, you're to prevent the Amoongus from going for any spores this turn. If you want to go straight for another Wicked Blow with your Urshifu, that's probably a knockout into this Rillaboom. We're going to see the Terrestrialization, and then this Urshifu is going to turn into a pure Dark type. Those Wicked Blows are going to be even more powerful, as are these Sucker Punches. There's no priority active for this Rillaboom anymore. So if you anticipate that you're going to shut off the terrain, then you could go for Sucker Punch here. It's going to be a lot, but it is just going to be the fake out first. So the Urshifu does not get a chance to move this turn, and great p potential for this Pollen Puff to help make this Rillaboom more healthy and even with the Terra might survive that wicked blow. That is a really nice Pollen Puff. Obviously you have to cover for the Maridon being the fourth Pokemon. If Maridon switches in and you go for Sword, you're just losing so much ground. And now, like you said, most likely able to survive one wicked blow. The other issue is the Maridon has hit the field. It is at full power. You're gonna have the possibility for that Hadron Engine boosted Draco Meteor into the Amoongus, which we saw do a huge chunk of damage before, possibly even enough for a one hit KO without that special attack drop. But uh, at least it can't get Terra. So if True. you wanted to go for something like a Terra Electric Volt Switch, that combination is at least not there. So the Volt Switch into the Rillaboom, not so bad. It does soften up this Rillaboom a little bit, maybe making this damage calc for this Wicked Blow a little bit nicer and more comfortable to actually knock out this Rillaboom. I think that might be enough, Rosemary. If Wicked Blow targets into this Rillaboom, that could be a big KO here because that would mean there's no more grassy terrain. It does hit the Rillaboom and it does KO. The Pokemon score is now tied at three, but most importantly, the grassy terrain is gone. The, um, the Atrapagos is already terrestrialized, so there's no way to cancel out this electric terrain anymore. No. Oh, there isn't, and so this Amoongus is going to be really sad in this <laughs> position. I just, uh, what can you really do? Yeah, the Pollen Puffs are nice onto your partner, but as we mentioned before, this Screen Tail only has Dazzling Gleam as its attacking option, and it does not necessarily have the highest special attack output. And beyond that, Screamtail thrives when it can protect and when it's faster than everything on the field. But unfortunately, the Prankster Tailwind and the Unseen Fist cancel out both of those things. You really have nothing else that can take a, a what is the Terra, a, ter a Wickeder blow? A w yeah, <laughs> because that's even more that strong probably with the Trastalization. There's just not a whole lot you can do. Amoongus can't score anything. You can Rage Powder the Wicked, the, the um, uh, Urshifu, Wicked <laughs> the Wicked blow, yeah. <laughs> But you can't rage powder this Whimsicott. If Screamtail tries to protect or go for any kind of support moves, you will have no chance. But that is a good point, that there is still rage powder available, but that's not what they're going for. No. And the Screamtail is still going to be naturally faster than this Urshifu. So at least a good amount of damage down onto both the Whimsicott and the Urshifu, but the Wicked Blow is plenty to be able to knock out the Screamtail with that Terra Dark on top. So unfortunately for the Simungus, uh, yeah, you don't get the side pollen puff, but you do a uh, pretty nice amount of damage into that Urshifu. Same problem though. Can you actually find a win condition with this Terrapagos? I don't know if you can. That light screen actually comes in really handy here. You don't necessarily think of Screamtail and Amoongus as, as strong special attackers, but thanks to the light screen, the Dazzling Gleam and Pollen Puff, both super effective attacks failed to KO this Urshifu, which will be around to threaten even more damage. Another Wicked Blow, it threatens a close combat into that Terrapagos, and now you're in a really tough spot. The Terrapagos is stuck on the field without a way to cancel electric terrain. You can't go for Calm Mines here because you're just going to get on cord the following turn. It's, it's really hard to find space here because you need to be doing damage, but you're just facing down so many strong Pokemon. But there is a potential here for Antonio to try to withstand this electric terrain. If you're able to get a knockout onto this Urshifu right now, mm -hmm. then you are locking this Maridon down onto the terrain and hope that you're going to be able to get this electric terrain to 
expire naturally. The issue is, how do you stall up the terrain? The protect is like the main way to do that, but you can't protect through a wicked blow. You're just gonna get encore if you do protect. You can't even redirect encore from that Whimsicott. Terra Starstorm does come out, but thanks to detect, the Urshifu will take no damage. And Maridon will be taking a neutral Terra Starstorm here. Not super effective, of course, because it has not terrestrialized. And it won't do a whole lot of damage thanks to that light screen. No, but you're still hoping that this Maridon gets a chance to be locked down onto the train. You still do have the Rage Powder. So True. this Urshifu, it can't really go for Sucker Punch here. You have to go for something that's going to hit a little bit harder. And you don't have this Focus Sash that's going to be able to keep you around. So Jericho Meteor from this Maridon, though, still a huge threat. Of course, you still have the option to go for those Volt Switches as well, get some chip damage down, and then come back in once the Electric Terrain is maybe expired and make sure you can set that up once again. Well, the Rage Powder first. So both of these attacks from this Urshifu and this Maridon will be redirected, but the Draco Meteor is able to connect oh. and the one-hit knockout leaves this Terrapagos totally vulnerable. It's so strong. That Hadron Engine special attack boost is crazy for this Maridon. In close combat, will come out from Urshifu. No Terra Shell, no protection for Terrapagos, and the Urshifu takes the final KO. Jan Sim in this top eight match is able to win 2-0 to move on to the top four, defeating Antonio Sanchez and able to move on even further.